Okay, revolving about a line that is not on the coordinate axis. What this is is applications of integration. And we're trying to find rotational volume. So here we have, um, we're going to use the disk method. We're going to find the volume of a solid formed by revolving the region bounded by f of x is equal to 2 minus x squared and g of x equals 1 about the line y equals 1. I guess what would really be helpful is to take a look at what this looks like. So I think if you were taking the AP exam right now, or if you were taking a college exam, your professor would be letting you use your calculator, I would think, which is not always a great thing, to be completely honest with you. Uh, and this function would look like this. I mean, it would be a couple of pieces, and one would be this one. All right. We have this thing doing this kind of, and let this be um, f of x equals 2 minus x squared. And then we would have the second g of x function that would look like this, I think. And this is g of x is equal to 1. And what I'm suggesting to you is this, is that what's going to happen now is that this function is going to start to rotate around this part. We're going to rotate from here to here. That's the interval that we're going to rotate on. And that what it's going to look like is this. Sorry, you guys. I know what I'm talking about. That you're going to take this and you're going to just rotate it. And it's going to end up looking like this and they're going to do it so fast that this thing ends up looking like a solid right so we're trying to figure this out so i guess what we have to keep in mind is a, is a couple of things the first of which is that on this interval f of x is over g of x everywhere that we're looking at so i'm going to say this going to try to find out where the curves intersect. So I want to know where does, it, where does f of x equal g of x? Where are the curves in the same place? And f of x, of course, is equal to 2 minus x squared. And g of x is equal to 1. And if we solve them, right, we'll get 1 minus x squared equals 0. And, our, and we'll, we're going to find that these, this thing intersects at x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. Okay, so hopefully that makes enough sense to you. And then I'm going to start to set this thing up as a composite function. So I'm saying to you that I know this is negative 1 and this is 1. So what I just found out was the upper and lower limits of my integration, right? So I'm going to set this up like this. I'm going to set up 2x minus x squared is equal to 1. And I'm just going to make this into a composite function. So I'm going to say this is 1 minus x squared, right, is equal to my composite function. And then I'm going to go ahead and set it up using the disk formula, right? And if you remember, it's pi times the definite integral from a to b of the radius squared dx, isn't it? And that's all I'm trying to get to right now. I'm just going to fill in the blanks here. And remember that r of x is equal to our new function. I'm going to just call it f of x, but it's the new function. Maybe I'll call it h of x. That when I put f of x and g of x together, I got h of x, the composite. So I'm going to take that, and we said it was from negative 1 to 1, right, of 1 minus x squared squared dx. Now, keeping in mind, so somebody out there is going, what the hell are you doing? This actually does make some sense, right? Because remember, what we're doing is we're cutting this thing this way, and we're looking at it, and we're going to get a bunch of these circles, right? And the circle is going to have some small width to it. So the volume of the circle is the area of this times this little change in x value here, right? So this is pi r squared is the area of the circle times dx gives us the volume. Right, and we're going to do a bunch of those, right? An infinite number of those. So I'm going to, from here, actually I'm going to expand this. So I'm going to go ahead and expand here, if you don't mind. I'm going to expand this and get pi times integral 1 to here. And when we multiply this times itself, right, we're going to foil this out. And we'll get 1 minus 2x squared plus x to the fourth, I think. So 
Isn't that, is that good math? Sure it is. DX. Okay, so so far, so good, I believe. I'm going to go ahead and integrate this. I'm going to go ahead and integrate. So I'm going to, oh, this is what I wanted to make sure I'm telling you guys. If you're taking an exam, whether it be the AP exam or a college exam, if your professor or the your reader is letting you use a calculator, you need to write in calculus. So you need to show all of these steps. Okay, so as I was saying, make sure that you're showing all your calculus work. This is worth more points than the actual answer is. So I'm going to integrate this. One thing that people tend to forget when they do this is they tend to forget their constant of multi uh, their constant multiplier here. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to integrate this. The integral of 1 is just x, right? I'm just going to keep integrating this through and get minus 2x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5. Isn't that right? As evaluated from negative 1 to 1. Believe it or not, we're kind of done here, but I want to make sure that, I don't know what your professor is saying, but I do know for AP readers that they are really interested in, in seeing your calculus. So if you were to say this to them, if you were to say the area is equal to pi, that's this pi right here, times f of 1 minus f of zero, I'm sorry, oh, you know what, it's not f of one, it's f of one minus f of negative one, isn't it? So if you were to do all of that math and show that math, this would be enough probably for almost all of your points. You can go back through and, and do all the math, and I did it, I have it all written out here, but I'm looking at time and thinking about what you probably do and don't want to see, but the answer I got was 16 pi fifteenths after I simplified. So uh, some things to keep in mind, one of which is as you're using the fundamental theorem of calculus that this negative sign is, fun is, is formulaic. Another thing I guess I might put here on my notes is that I'm using the fundamental theorem of calculus here. All right, so let's go back through and recap really, really quickly. Here, we, we're revolving around this horizontal line, right? that is not a coordinate axis. And it means we're going to have to make some small change. We take a look at these. We find out where they intersect here, right? Here, we find their points of intersection here and here. Give us this point and this one. And then we start our math, right? Keeping in mind that fundamentally what we're using is this. Okay, I hope this is really helpful to you guys. Please give me some feedback. I really do appreciate your comments. Subscribe if you get a chance. And remember that you're, especially if you're taking the AP Cal exam, that it has to look, you have to write down all your calculus. Okay, you guys, good work.